You too, what's good? Welcome to another episode of New York Prison Talks. If you're new to my channel, I ask that you please like and subscribe. I like to send out information and give advice to people that might be going home or might be facing time or people that's inside right now that might be incarcerated that got family members that can help them out. But today I wanted to, I think everybody that was keen on my live, matter of fact, let me put it like that. I think everybody that pulled up to my live on my last live stream that showed the love and support. I've been getting a lot of views, a lot of subscribers recently. And I thank y'all for coming to my channel. Um, Today I wanted to talk about parole. You know, being on parole per se. I want to say that um, I've been told a lot of people, it's a high percentage of dudes that get sent back on parole for violation. It's like a very high percentage. Um, last time I was told it was high, like in the 90, like 95%, 90, like 90. I don't know how accurate that could be, but I know a lot of dudes do get violated and go back to prison just off of dumb shit that they don't want to follow. And it's like, I've been home this March makes two years. I've been on parole. I've been released. And it's like, I haven't had no problems. Like literally. I don't know if it's because I just know I'm just somebody that knows how to follow the rules or what. It's like, I'm not blaming it on my PO. I could say she has parts in the reason why I'm still out here. But it's like, I know how to adjust to certain situations when it comes to rules. And when I say this, it's like a lot of dudes, if you, if you, if the type of dudes that be getting sent back is this type of dudes that's always be in the box a lot or always just, it, it depends. It depends because nah, because it be dudes that, that, that could be cool, never really catch tickets in prison, never really get into trouble. And then they go home and then a year or two later, if I'm still in that same jail, I see them come right back. I, I seen that happen many times. And it's like, it's like when you come home from being in prison, it's like a lot of freedom at once. Um, It's like hard to adjust. Whatever attitude you had in prison, you're going to bring that outside to the world, to society. And it's like you got to know off the rip how to adjust, try to follow the rules. It, it was hard for me. I, it, was, it was hard for me, but I, obviously I'm still out here. But I'm saying it was hard for me, but I got it. I got it fast. I got it together quick. Um, when I first came home, I had the prison mindset. I, I just wanted to still fight people or just act like I wanted to fight people. I had that nasty attitude. I just always still grilling people. I always was just grilling people. Like, always wanted to, f like, like looking like I want to fight. I was ready to war for war. And it's like, I still do that a little bit. It's not I, as bad. As how I was when I first came home. And it's like. A lot of. Let me put it like this. A lot of dudes get sent back. Because they probably was doing the same stuff. That they was doing before they got locked up. Or they probably just. So much freedom that. They feel like if they got a curfew. They feel like they could. Go about that. And, and, and not follow the curfew. You feel me? It's like they might have programs that they need to take. Or. Like drug and alcohol programs ASAP, they might complete it, or they might be in a program, and they next thing you know, because you could get random piss tests out here too if you take in a program. I seen it happen. I never took the program, but I know exactly how it goes. A lot of dudes begin locked back up, or, or probably going to like a rehab program or something. That to me, that's getting locked up because you not you not you away, and it's like if you got a drug problem, try not to do drugs. That that's simple. That's one. Cause a lot of dudes be getting violated because they 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 kind of calmed down on that. Gave I believe they gave people chances more more more. You gotta have more type of um violations than just that feeling a drug a drug test or something. But a lot of dudes still will get sent back for that. And it's like if you know you, you like to smoke weed and do drugs, and you know you about to get, you get pest tested every time you gotta go to either parole or every time you gotta go to to the ASAP program. Be smart about what you do. It's common sense. They gonna that like that's the rules. You know you're supposed to keep a job. That's my biggest issue. My biggest issue is to this day, employment is not that um I can't get a job. Well, it is and it ain't. Because when I say this, it's like 
I only can get certain type of jobs because nowadays they like to hit people with, have you been on parole or release within the last seven years? And I fall under that category because I'm still on parole and I only been released for like two years. So I fall under that category and it's like the only type of warehouse, I mean, the only type of jobs I could get is warehouse jobs, only type of jobs. And like, who wants to be working warehouse jobs? Like warehouse jobs is just physical work all day long, all day long. You work at least 10 hours, 10, 12 hours might be till the work is finished. And it's like, that's the type of stuff I struggle with out here. It's like, but I know that if I get fired, because I, I, I think I get fired for a few jobs, I make sure that I would tell my PO. I make sure that I would get another job immediately. Whatever stipulations that they give you when you get released, the rules and stipulation that you have to follow on parole, just make sure you follow it. The main thing is being on parole is to really stay safe and clear is keep a good communication with your parole officer. Now, I have the type of um, PO that um, I'm not calling her dickhead or or she's mean or anything. She, she might have a little comments and stuff, but it's not nothing crazy. It's like she makes sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, she never bothers me. She never really bothers me. I don't know because probably she got a whole bunch of other dudes that she probably dealing with at the time. But I don't give her problems. You know, if um, she makes sure that every time before I hang up the phone call, when I report to her or when I used to come see her, I can't see it no more because of the coronavirus. So I call her every couple weeks. We make sure we be on the same page. I don't leave nothing out. If you have police contact, meaning if you get in contact with, the, with any police officer and they grab your ID, and they call it in the system. That's called police contact. And if you had police contact, you're supposed to notify your PO immediately. Now, I didn't had police contact probably like three or four times since I've been home. Nothing crazy. Probably because I was in passenger seat and the driver probably got probably a uh, broken taillight or probably was speeding or just something like that. You know, that ain't had nothing to do with me or why I'm getting police contact. You know, just I would tell my PO. You got to tell them where it happened, what time, and this, that, and the third. And it's like, nothing's going to happen. It's just communication. I mean, probably if you know you're doing something, and you, if you know that you out, because you might have a geographic restriction, meaning that you probably can't leave the county or, or leave probably wherever you at, the city where you at, follow that. Don't be leaving the county and leaving your city or whatever. Because if you, if you do this, if you leave the county, and in and, and this past curfew hours for your curfew, and you get police contact, they, that, that's three different things right there. You violated curfew, you outside of your county, you violated geographic restriction, and now you got police contact. Your PO don't have no choice but to violate you, especially because of the police contact. Like, all of that's going to be on paper. Because every time you get into police contact, and they call it in, it's automatically going to show up, pop up. Probably your PO going to see that. It's always, that's why, because every time I call her, it'd be the same thing. It'd be the same question she asks me. I don't get into no trouble, so we keep a, a, a short conversation. I mean, if I needed something, she'll try to help me. Main thing is she asks me if I have any police contact and drug or alcohol problems. I tell her no to both. I don't be having police contact. Usually when I have police contact, I t I notify her probably that night or whenever immediately I could. You know? Um when it comes to the curfew, a lot of dudes be having an eight o'clock night curfew, nine o'clock at night curfew that might last to from eight PM to eight in the morning. Eight to eight or nine PM to nine in the morning. If you know that you're gonna be going out and doing dumb stuff to get caught, that's on you. That's on you to get locked up. That's not nobody's fault. You can't blame your PO and say, oh, she was a dickhead. She 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 violated me once. Ah, uh, ah, uh, maybe because she probably gave you outs that you probably didn't know. And that she didn't tell you that those was outs. And then now you really got into some shit where there's no going back. Cause you know. P.O.'s got bosses, too. They got to report everything that they write down that we tell them, that I tell my P.O. She got to report that to somebody. So I can't get mad if I were to get violated. You feel me? I can't get mad at certain things. 
I don't get into trouble because I know what I'm doing. I don't be going outside at night. My the, the job I have is like I working all day, so it's passing curfew hours. But I know if I'm out past my I got an eight o'clock curfew. If I know that I'm out past eight o'clock, I'm I gotta be either working or 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 I'm just out violating. Because if not, if I get caught doing that dumb ass shit and my PO come see me during any time of them hours, I don't know what can happen. I could get violated. I could get, yeah, go sent back to jail. I, all that. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want to see nobody get locked back up because a lot of dudes don't know how to adjust. They come outside. They come out and get released and start going crazy. They come out and want to go still sell the same drugs that they were selling before they got locked up on the same corner with a camera right on top of them, watching them do all the transactions, watching them sell all these drugs. And you might think it's cool. Weeks go by. Probably a month might go by. Next thing you know, you got a new charge because you was continue to selling drugs while a camera was on top of you. It's cameras everywhere. So if you know you one of them type of dudes that like to sell drugs and stuff, just get a job. Like, it's so easy. It is and it ain't. But the, if you know that you want to need money and you're not trying to go back to prison, just get a legal job where it's just going to help you in the long run. So what if you get fired? I done got fired a few times. Nothing really can happen unless you probably assaulted somebody and did some crazy shit. All, my pe all the times I got fired is because I probably had the attitude or it just I couldn't work the jobs. It's like I like some jobs and them warehouse jobs, it be physical. Who wants to be picking and selecting on, on all day long for hours? Just know if, if you if you pick a, a warehouse job that got groceries in it, those are fast paced warehouse jobs. It's fast paced because they gotta ship everything out fast. So don't try to pick those type of warehouse jobs. If you pick a warehouse job, pick a job where it's just light, light work. You know, I got a job. $18 an hour right now, but I just don't like it. I don't be liking none of the jobs I work. It's all warehouse jobs. I get denied on the delivery truck driver jobs, like the regular Amazon truck that don't require no CDL and stuff like that. Amazon denied me, all the Amazon. They got Amazon booming over here in New York now. I get denied with all of that. Somebody told me to fill out for FedEx. I'm about to try that too, because I do think FedEx do be hiring felons, matter of fact. And it's like, if you really want a good, good job where it's probably not working in the warehouse, try to get your CDL. The CDL license when you're driving the truck, track the trailers and stuff, and you be good. Now, if if you somebody that doesn't have a job for a long time and and you just you're not making sense to your PO when you call her and report to her. Because I remember one time I didn't have a job for a while and she hit me with the. So how are you getting money? And I didn't have no choice. Like I was kind of stuck because that was a good question. And I was like, I'm not. I straight up told her, I'm not. I wasn't doing nothing illegal. It just I was just I was just still acting like I was a teen, like just playing video games all day, stuck in the house. I didn't really care. But when she told me that, shit snapped out into reality, meaning she probably thinking I'm doing something illegal. So now I got to really try to get a job so she won't try to be fucking with me. Because if you if you get a job and basically if you get a job, it's like taking up your whole day. It's like you, you know, you're not doing that bad if you got a job because you get income. You're not working and, and you're not doing nothing. You don't got a car. You know, you're not trying to you're not studying anything, you're not taking any courses. You, 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 you taking programs, but you haven't completed it yet. You know, it's like, oh, you might be new. It's like, what are you doing? They're going to be on you more, and they, it's quick to violate you like that. You know, parole, it could be easy, but dudes make it a lot hard. Like, I've seen a lot of dudes come back to prison and talk about, yo, parole's violating me. My PO was a dickhead. Ah, ah. Maybe they was a dickhead because they probably gave you a whole bunch of chances that you really didn't even realize because you probably was getting high too much out here or... You was just caught up in and just just caught up into some dumb shit, and now it's like you violated because your PO been been watching you a lot, and she just letting all this or he or she just letting it add up, you know. Like I'm kind of glad the type of PO I got because it's like she makes sure she she follows she she's strict 
And I like that strict stuff because she making sure when I got fired my first couple times, I remember my first time I got fired, I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her until I reported to her. She asked me, why you didn't tell me you got fired? I didn't, I, me, I just been home probably like four or five months. I didn't know that I was supposed to tell her immediately. She was barking on me. I didn't like that she was barking. I don't like when nobody barks on me. But it was it was rea another reality check. Soon when you get fired from a job, you have to notify your PO. It kind of makes sense because if you think if she think you still working, and it's probably past curfew hours, she gonna probably be not be checking up on you. You know, so it's like you not having a job, she could check up on you. So it's like when you not when you having a job, she might fall back on you a little bit and and, and 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 relax on you and shit because you got a job. But if you not telling her that you're not working and she figures out a few days later or a week later, a week or two later that you ain't have a job because you got fired. That kind of sounds sneaky because you she going to be thinking he or she going to be thinking what you've been doing. This whole time that you didn't want to tell me because this whole time you've been not been working. And that means you probably could have not been in the house during curfew hours. That's a big issue. So that's the main thing. When you get fired, you tell your parole officer. If you get in police contact, you tell your parole officer. Any little thing that happens when I got my car, I told my PO. She asks me everything. What kind of car is it? What color is it? The license plate. I just, I send her everything. I, I screenshot everything or I send her a picture. Every time I get fired from a job, I try to find one immediately. I, I text her everything. I text her the emails that, that apl me applying and the responses that I'm getting back, that I'm hired, the pay and all of that. Because that's my main struggle to this day is just keeping a job. But a lot of dudes like to get locked up because they violating curfew being outside of the county or probably, probably doing more crimes. And it's like because they they the mindset is the is just wild and free. And the mindset is like you kind of grind me out here because it's like I just came from prison. I don't give a fuck about nothing that's going on. And that's what a lot of dudes be thinking. And that mindset will swallow you up. And next thing you know, you you, you wearing that thin number all over again. You wearing that whole thin number on your green green state shirt all over again. And you talking about telling dudes. That you got violated. You seeing dudes that you was probably in the same jail with. Because a lot this a lot of dudes be getting violated. And the jail that they got released from, they go right back to that same exact jail when they catch that violation. I seen it happen mad times. And it I, it's so embarrassing. Like it's so embarrassing. I didn't see dudes, I seen homies tell dudes, yo, if you go, if you get violated and come back, I'm gonna knock you out. Like that's kind of motivation. But it's like it's like the truth. It's like, why are you coming back and doing dumb shit? That makes other, like, it makes us feel, it makes dudes that's a, that ain't going home, probably never going home, or that just been locked up for a minute, and they see other dudes coming back. That makes them feel bad. Like, yo, I wish that was me that went home. I know I would have never got violated. Because a lot of, I did when I did the seven years, and I seen all these dudes just coming back from Franklin, or when I was in Elmira, or any any jail I got released, um, not released, any jail that I was in for a long time, and, and I'd seen dudes come back over the violation, because they like to send you back to the same exact jail you got released from, I would look at them, and be like, man, I wish they that was me, I wish I got sent home instead of his dumb ass, because he just came right back, he wasn't even home three months, I didn't seen dudes come right back in 60 days, 60 days with a brand new charge, a lot of dudes like to come home with the mindset of, I'm going to get that nigga that, 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 that got me locked up or something like that. And now they might come home and kill him. And I've just seen this happen too. They might body that dude and come right back. Some dudes just really don't care. And it's like, it, it's embarrassing. And it's, just, it's embarrassing to go back to prison. It's like, I don't ever want to go get locked back up. Like, it gets whack. It gets whack. And that's a fact. It's like, follow the rules. The same way you follow the rules in prison, you follow the rules out here. If you know you got to take all the programs, take all your programs, whether it's ART, the anger management program, the ASAP program, whether you got a sex offense case and you got to take the sex offender program or you got a domestic violence, you got to take domestic violence. I'm not judging nobody. If you got to take any of those programs, take it and complete it and try to learn from it. 
it usually the same programs that you take out here in the streets. You you done took in prison, but and it's the same type of shit. You feel me? But just try to, to maintain. A lot of dudes don't know how to maintain. People that got family members that's locked up, that's incarcerated right now, and y'all know that they about to come home, try to help them. Give them a support system. Give them a support system because they going to they gonna need help. Believe it or not. Their mindset is not the same like how the mindset of a regular citizen that never been locked up is. Their mindset is, is just grimy and negative and, and they don't just care at the moment. Because it's like all this freedom and just want to just stay out a lot or just want to get high because they could get away with it because ain't nobody really watching them as much. You know, you got POs that might come see you one night, come back three days later and see you again. And then because you thought because she came Tuesday, she might not come back for another two, three weeks or something like that. I'm just making it up. But her ass probably came back two days later and now you're not home. That happened to me when I got um when I first came home. My PO, I had a male PO. He came, right? I, I, for me, when I first came home, I went to, I got released to a whole nother area. I ain't know nobody. I ain't have no car. I ain't have nowhere to go. So I was playing the crib every single night. You know, I didn't have no, I didn't have nothing. So it was like, when he came, he came on, I think on the Tuesday. Then he came like three days later. Three days later. And he came on the morning. Three days later. He came at night. Cause the hours is, could be from eight to eight. Meaning 8 a.m. I mean 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. It doesn't matter. During those hours, any time, whether it's 12 o'clock at night, whether it's three in the morning, they allowed to come to to check up on you. And he came at the nighttime. Then three days later, he came in the morning time, like at six, seven o'clock. But I was home for that. It's just I couldn't. I didn't hear the phone. That's another thing. If you don't have, if you got a phone, make sure you be on point with the phone because you might not hear it. Try to have your, your ringer up a lot be, or have your phone right next to you because you might not hear it. That That's what happened to me when I first came home. I didn't hear it. He kept calling me, calling me. He stood there for a little minute. Probably like He was there for like a good five minutes checking the scene. I called him right back. I'm like, yo, I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Nothing happened. He was just like, yo, just make sure you be on point with the phone because, you know, I don't want to see nothing happen, you know. Some POs do be caring because that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to help you. But if you're not getting enough help with your parole officer, try to get into a program that could help you get a job, get employment, fill out resumes because they have programs out here for that, too. Um, Try to go to the Department of Labor and get help through, them, through those resources, you know. Um, Try to get your license. These are checks. These are good things that that's helping you probably to um take less stress off off of your parole officer, so she so, so she won't bother you as much. Try to get your driver's license. Try to take some type of certificate or course, you know, and just keep employment. And when you get employment, try not to be don't be fighting people or taking drugs with with the coworkers, because you know a lot of coworkers like to get high and stuff. Don't do none of that stuff. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Try to just maintain till you can get off parole. Because a lot of dudes got five years on parole, post, three years. You might be good. I'm still in the making of this, so I, I can't really say all the way up to the end right now. I'm like almost halfway done. But I could see me making it all the way. It's like, it's like I feel like the first year might be your hardest because you don't know. you learning and stuff. You learn it. And a lot of dudes that I used to report to with parole with, they would tell me, Main thing is just keep the co uh, communi good communication with your PO. Any little thing that's going on. If you know that you want to leave the county, let her know. If you know that you want to leave the state, let her know. You might have to fill out some paperwork that you um got that you leave in the state, but get permission to do all of this stuff. You don't have to go and and and, and be sneaky about the stuff you do. Just get permission about all the things you do because if you don't, and you get caught police contacting you outside the county and it's past curfew just know you might go back to prison because that's not good all them checks is not adding up because that police contact is serious it gets called into the database and it pops up and your po can see all of that shit and then you try to tell her that when she when you tell her when she, you call her to report to her and tell her you ain't got no police contact that could be bad and she know you you do and that could be bad that never happened to me so i don't know what could happen if you got police contact and you lie to her and say you don't and she's looking right at it. You lying to her. You lying to her. You being sneaky. I don't. I haven't lied to my PO yet, at all. 
It's no point. Because once you start lying, that's when she probably going to be on you more. He or she going to be on you more. They're going to be paying attention and watching everything you do. And then, then now it's going to be trouble. It's like they're going to be on you, on you more. It's like, ah, I parole this. They coming to see me every three, four days. They checking up on me a lot. Oh, my parole dick. Now your PO's a dickhead because you fucking up. And now they got to be on you harder to make sure you you following all the stipulations that you had when you came came out from, from being released. And now you thinking they a dickhead because all they doing is their job. They just doing their job. That's it. They just doing their job. And what, what, let, me, let me say another thing. If you got problems with people out here, yeah, this is another thing. If you got problems with people out here, try to just avoid them the best way you can. Because I've been had situations where people wanted to call my PO on me or because they probably was hating on me. A lot of females like to do that. If you get into relationships and you might break up with the chick. They might want to call your PO on you or something and get you lined up, just making up dumb shit. But they got to prove it, though. But they like to do shit like that, too. If you know you got enemies and they know you're on parole, don't tell people you're on parole. That's one thing I'm going to say. Don't let people know you're on parole. I don't be telling dudes I'm on parole and stuff. I'm making videos because I'm doing great out here. I'm doing good. So I'm, I could talk about this. I'm, I know how to, to move the same way I was moving in prison. I'm, I'm moving out here, but smarter, you know? It's like, if you know you got enemies or people that might not like you or you get out to out of a relationship, just know that they might hate on you and call the PO on you and just make up a whole bunch of dumb shit. Might give them the scoop on shit you be doing and shit like that. And your PO might not say nothing. She might just keep it in, jot it down or something and, and do some investigation on it and research on it. And you know, that's the that's the scariest thing. That that's the scary thing of being on parole. If you trying, if you know you ain't doing nothing, but you got haters on you, and they just reporting that shit, making up shit, that's the one thing you gotta watch out about. But it's like, try to find good jobs, like warehouse jobs, or if, even if it's a twelve dollar job working at the gas station, or because that's the I only have I have worked at the gas station once, and the rest was all my jobs was working in the warehouse. I got eighteen dollar job right now. I'm, I'm doing good. But I don't like that shit. I know over time that shit kicks in the twenty seven dollars, and then I'm just getting mad money off this shit. But it takes up your life, and it's like if you know other ways to to get money, whether it's you, you you trying to do forex or you you learning the stock market and Bitcoin, do that. Let your PO know that you that's how you might be getting getting income and revenue and stuff like that. Cause any little thing you do, and you report it to her. That's a plus. That's a positive. Just remember that. That's a positive. The main thing is, another thing is just, just that support system. Family got to help the people that get released. Because if they come out and they don't have that support, whether they don't have somebody probably trying to look out for them with food at first and clothes and, and giving them money just to, to, to adjust and feel a little better and feel like they normal. You know, because when you probably come home, you might, you, you're more older and stuff. And it's like you don't have nothing as much. A lot of people don't have much, and they that would make them want to do crimes all over again, or make them sell drugs all over again, because they don't know what to do, and they be like, damn, how am I going to get money? And the situation might not even be that bad. All you got to do is just apply online. My PO was on me when I first came home about that job shit, because I noticed, and she, and she enabled that shit in my head. If I get fired, apply immediately for another job. Why? Because I'm, I'm doing a good thing by applying. Just apply. Just keep on applying. I think everybody that come to my YouTube, any anything y'all need to know about parole, I still learning on. I'm still learning about this stuff, but I know a lot to the point where it's like I know how to adjust out here, and I could give a lot of advice for people to stay home, just have that support team. Don't violate curfew. Police contact. Let them know. Um. Don't um. Any little thing that happens, just keep the good communication. That's it. Thank y'all for coming to my YouTube once again. See y'all. Have a good day.